for you guys just how does it feel just to in that losing streak and not only that but you upset a top 25 team to do so uh, i think it feels really good you know uh we work really hard and obviously guys you know we felt like uh we were good enough to get wins and we let some slip away so obviously getting this one is a really good one there top 25 team and hopefully we can just keep building off the momentum uh, just to add on that, I mean, we didn't let a lot slip away. I mean, every game that we, we didn't play in, I mean, single digit losses, um, those are things that we felt like we could turn around. Um, we, we lost a really close one that really sh we should have won um, at home against TCU. And we came back with positive energy and practice and we was able to turn around and get a really good Texas Tech team. Yeah, I just think um, we, we know how good we are. We've had a lot of close games, but I think we are tired of moral victories and we were just ready to take a step in the right direction. And tonight was a step in the right direction. Mike, how do you make sure that this win isn't the high point of your season moving forward? Um, consistency. Uh, we know what it took for preparation and in going into this game. And uh, we're going to move forward. And there's still things to learn from tonight because we weren't perfect. And uh, we're in the best conference in, in the country. So we're going to figure it out. Mike, you've been here for a while. Does this game? have any similarities maybe to any other games you've played in as far as trying to get the season back on track? Um, definitely some West Virginia vibes from 2019, but we have a long way to go. And that year we were 0-2, this year we're 0-4. So we're, we got a, a bigger hole to climb out of, but I got confidence in our team. And then Mark, just systems for you, your rebounding this year tremendously improved over your time at Missouri and Illinois. Just how has that made your game better as a player? Uh, <clears throat> you know, at Mizzou and Illinois, uh, I really could only, you know, defensive rebound, but now I can go to the boards on the offensive end too. So uh, it kind of just helps me get in the flow of the game, you know, uh, grab rebounds, push up the court, you know, just, you know, get a feel for the, how the game's going. And, uh, you know, that's really, you know, I just try to grab every rebound, you know, that's what coach challenged me with. Even if I can't grab them, trying to put my hand on it and tip it out to the other guys so we, they can only get one shot. Guys, how big a moment was that at the end of the first half? You know, you guys were down eight, then you hit back-to-back -back threes to, to close it out and get within two. Just how, how big was that to get it so close going in? It was one? great because, you know, obviously, you know, in the timeouts, coach was uh, talking to us, you know, just keep moving the ball because every time we was moving the ball, getting in the paint, we were scoring and passing out for one more. And we did that, I think, two plays in a row. Nigel and Mike hit big threes and uh, it really got the crowd going. You know, and I felt like we just kept building off that energy. Even, you know, when they made a run in the second half, we kind of fought back and, um just kept pushing, uh, pushing away after that. And this is for any of you guys. This, what does it say about your resilience? You guys had this huge lead and you jump out to it and then you go down eight, but then you, you don't kind of hang your heads and you rally back in it and, and get this win. Just something that we worked on this whole time. I mean, every game has been, you know, flip flop where we'll go jump out or somebody else jump out and they, they come back or we'll come back. And we try, we knew teams are going to make runs, but it's how we responded to the runs. And I think we responded very, very greatly today. Um, we were able to take their, their, their best punch and we was able to throw one of our own. And then we were able to make a run late. And that's what um, got us over top. Mike, how big was Marquise Noel today in getting this victory? He was huge. I mean, he was everywhere on defense. Uh, they were trying to attack him, and he wasn't going for any of it. He was getting steals, deflections. Seems like he had like ten steals. Plus, he had nine assists for us on offense. So, he, I mean, he was huge. He's the reason. I mean, we're all the reason we won, but we wouldn't have won without him. You know, obviously, you know, going against him every day in practice. Nigel can say the same. He's, he's really. He really will hound you. And, you know, I think they felt that tonight. Just he's so crafty. Just get him. He's strong, too. I don't think people realize how strong he is. When he gets underneath you, you're really not moving him. So, and he's one of the fastest. So, he's, he's, he's tremendous on defense. Nigel, what was it like just having um, Mike's presence again out there today? How much of a help was it? I mean, sure. I know how big Mike was, <clears throat> how big Mike was for last year. And he'll come back. I mean, we missed him these last couple of days. And I was so confident in him. Um, from the beginning, I've been telling him, hey, man, I, I believe in you. I believe in more than you probably even believe in yourself. And then today he came out and he was that big spark for us. I mean, he made good shots, made good reads. He was aggressive. And that's what we needed for him. And I mean, what, he practiced one day, came back and then played today and had an outstanding game. I mean, that's the mic I know. It's the mic I seen last year. And with that, with that type of mic, I feel like, shh, 
there's a lot there's a, it adds a lot more presence for us on offense. Mark, you seemed super pumped when you hit that three to kind of clinch the game. What were the emotions going through you at that point? Uh, you know, I was, just, was getting ready to win. You know, that's all I cared about was winning. You know, sometimes my passion gets a little, a little the best of me. You know, I get going and get to talking, but you know, I just, I just wanted to win. You know, and that, I'm gonna show it. Um, Nigel, can you tell me a little bit about the decision? you and Mike and all these guys to get rid of your hair here what what was with that I don't know I, I forgot I came up it was kind of more of a joke type of thing but my parents kind of hated my hair it's getting so long and out of control I really just needed a reason to do it and we kind of joked about it and then next you know it just became a thing for us as a team um I mean I don't know who I was going to do and who I was not but it doesn't define who we are I mean the hair is just like a significant piece of us I mean I think I look different. I think Mike looks different, but hey, it made Mike play 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 really good today. So maybe I like the low hair Mike. <laughs> maybe I do. Nigel, what was the uh, main difference in that's improved offensive efficiency in the second half? I mean, we took we took great shots. I mean, we, we got in, you know, inside to the paint. Um, Coach always told us with with paint touches, we're really efficient on the offense end. Uh, that's what we tried to do, make sure we got into the paint. And then when we got in, we were able to find the open guys. And hey, guys are making shots today, especially in the, in the clutch time time of the game. And that, that really was put us over our head. Um, and then we were able to make some free throws down the stretch as well. Mark, how tough was Bryson Williams to guard on the defensive end? Uh, he was tough. You know, obviously, he's a good player. And, you know, Davion and did their best. And uh, when I got on him, you know, the last seven minutes, I just tried to – you know, just stay in front of him and box him out because he's really good on the glass, him and O'Banner. So I really just try to block them out, make sure those guys didn't get it. And uh, when I fronted him, if he did catch it, just try to wall up or push him out the paint so he could shoot a tough fadeaway. That was kind of what we wanted. And Mark, you've kind of made a pattern of the late threes with the uh, one at Nebraska and today. How much calm do you have as a fifth year senior in the last two? Uh, <clears throat> I'm definitely confident. Uh, I feel like I can make shots and open, definitely, you know, space the floor out. So I'm just going to be ready to shoot. And if they find me, you know, knock, knock them down because, you know, that's what the team needs. You know, they helped us win today. So that's all I care about. And Mike, how key was the team's defensive effort uh, today? I mean, that's, that's huge. I mean, that was our identity when we got it going last year. And that's, that's I think that's going to be our identity for the rest of the year. And uh, we got we got great individual defenders, but when you bring us all together as a team, I mean, the sky's the limit on defense. This is all for all three of you, or one of you can answer. But you know, you've been in every Big Twelve game so far, and then you now finally get a win over a really good Texas Tech team. How do you use this as motivation now, going against you know a solid Texas team that you guys lost to earlier in the season? I just think, you know, speaking from experience, you know, we just got to keep building um, off this win. You know, uh, when you get a big win like this, you got to keep the momentum. Our confidence is high right now. And we all knew that we could get wins. We just let them slip away. I think Coach was saying, like, the last three losses was all single digits, like seven points. So we all knew we was right there. So obviously, we put the pieces together today and finished the mission. And now we just got to keep going and attack the next game with the same energy and same passion to get a win, whatever it takes, kind of, that was, was our model today, basically, you know, you know, toughness and discipline. And I think we did that, you know, did whatever it took to get the win and guy was on the floor, every, everything. Nigel, you guys are getting ready to go to Texas. And when you played them last time, obviously you were missing a lot of people. Now this was the first game where you've had every single person on the bench, coaches, players, how important was that today? And then how are you going to be able to use that when you go down and play Texas? I mean, shoot, the bench brought a lot of energy. I mean, I'm, I'm really thankful for those guys. The times that I was sitting on the bench, I mean, I couldn't even stay sitting down because they had a whole bunch of energy. They were up, standing, cheering, stomping, all that type of stuff. And that's really good for us, especially when we're on the road. Um, not many fans are going to be there for us. Uh, we can get that energy from, from the coaches and the players that's on our side. I mean, it gives us some juice. And I really appreciate them that from them today, um, having a deep and a full bench. Um, just, you know, it feels really good for us. I thought the energy in here was, you know, amazing today. You know, the fans, all the fans coming out. And uh, I thought it was a great atmosphere today. You know, Coach Lowry always told me that this place can really be special when when it's, uh, you know, when we're winning and stuff like that. And uh, he wants us to get it back today. And I think, you know, this is the start of that. You know, the fans were great today. And I thought we, they showed, you know, they gave us a boost. 
And then Mike, how hard was it for you when you were out with those, those few games to be, to not be able to be around your teammates, have to sit at home and see those close losses. And then I guess how much of a difference do you think everybody kind of like the last question, everybody being back helped? I mean, yeah, <clears throat> that was tough. Watching from home. That was tough. It was, but uh, there was nothing I could do about it. So I tried to just stay positive throughout the whole time and, and just, I was in the room, like I was on the bench watching every game, like hyped up and whatnot. And then the, we took some tough losses, but I think just collectively as a team, when we're all together, we're really special. And um, I think it's time to start moving towards that. Like I wanted to ask, you know, you, you've played with a lot of really good on-ball defenders here, Barry, X, et cetera. Where does, where does Marquise kind of rank in that group in your mind? Um, it, as far as a pest goes, He's number one. I'm never like in practice, you could tell just like he's you're uncomfortable dribbling every time. And that's sort of like what got us all better because we guard each other every day and we go against each other every day. Like Marquise, he's special. And then just like Mark's the same way. You guard Mark, you gotta be ready because he's strong. And then obviously Nigel, so crafty scoring. It's like everybody, everybody's so special in their own ways. And yeah. Marquise is up there for sure. And, and then my last thing on that, this is a follow-up. Is, is he, this is for all three of you guys, is, is he the best that you've had to go against as far as stealing the ball? Yeah, he's up there. I think the only person that I can see, you know, I played with my teammate last year, Drew. Uh, he was pretty good at steals, but he wasn't really a pest like Keith. You know, Drew is more like smart. Keith is just really just gets it, like, he'll just take it right from under you, you know, like he did at the end of the game, like, He's like Mike was saying, I think that's like kind of the perfect word, just a little pest, like fast, strong pest, just not, won't leave you alone. Like, <laughs> I don't know. He's up there now. I think he, he is for sure. Mike, I'm curious, did you have any words of wisdom for these guys after watching them lose so close the last two games? To be honest with you, I didn't say much because I was, I, was, I was pretty mad. Honestly, that we're on four. We got this great team and we are on four. And so I was mad. But I think all my teammates know know how highly I think of them and how much I love them. So I just told them before the game, no more moral victories, because we're too good to have moral victories. It's time to get some real wins. And today was the start. Thank you guys, appreciate your time. Thank you.